Good morning, uh, Giacomo Castro Giovanni. I just got a message from Mr. Harris. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, my day. My name is Pete Freeman. I'll be your chair today. Alongside me will be uh, Mr. Prater. He will be on the board, and Ms. Ledoux. Um, today's hearing. Uh, just let everyone know we will allow three speakers in three minutes. I'll warn you when you get close, if you're about to finish up, I will let you finish up. But, uh, you know, we have to do that because of time constraints. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is get uh, headquarters over here to introduce themselves. Jason Thompson. Sure. Carla Williams. Francis Abbott. Carolyn Stapleton, board member here. I'm sorry. Okay, the process we could do today is I will read some information into the record and ask you to verify it. Uh, then we'll conduct an interview. Uh, your case has been assigned to Ms. Ledoux. Uh, she will be the leader on the interview. At the end of the interview, uh, we'll be allowed to ask questions. Also, uh, he gets to put on his uh, presentation from the defense and the victims, if we have any victims. Um, I would like for the people here on his behalf to introduce yourself, please, and note to me if you're going to be speaking or not. Awesome. Ahead, Abigail Floresca on behalf of Warren Harris from the Loyola Law Bank. Okay. I will be speaking. And, I, and we're going to let you speak last. We'll let the offender speak second to last. So you will be the last one to talk. Okay. Ma'am. Sir, your name? Oh, good morning. Uh, my name is Stanislav Moroz. I'm an attorney. I'm just assisting Ms. Floresco, but I won't be speaking. 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. My name is Roberta Harris. I am Warren Harris' sister in law, and I will be speaking. Okay. Is your name Roberta Harris? Roberta Harris. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ma'am? My name is Bernadette Fox. I'm a friend of the family, and I will not be speaking. Okay, Ms. Fox, that'll be noted. Uh, sir? My name is Darren Okay. Uh, I see we have the parole project on here. Uh, I'll call you at the proper time uh, for you to speak. Um, also, with the people at Anagola, the staff, first, would you introduce yourself? Deputy Warden Tracy Falgo, Reginald Latin, Rural Classification. Carmen Shipley, Offender Records. Jody Sturgeon, Program Consultant. Are there anyone there, uh, Warden Falgu, to speak on the inmates' behalf? No, sir. Family's on another video for you. Okay, great. With uh, those of you on video, would you like to identify yourself? And you got to take it off of mute. Good morning, sir. Giacomo Castro Giovanni. I'm a staff attorney for Loyola Law School. I'm here for supervision of Ms. Abigail Floresca, attorney for Mr. Harris, student attorney for Mr. Harris, and I will not be speaking. Okay, sir. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brenda Palmer. I'm Warren Harris' sister, and I will be speaking on his behalf. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Sister speaking. Okay. Uh, anyone else? My name is Katasha Harris. I'm Warren Harris's niece, and I believe you've met your uh, three-person max. Uh, that was on. Yes, ma'am, we have. Let's see, the attorney doesn't count, and we have two yeah, others yeah, speaking. Yeah. We have. Okay. Okay, uh, but we will note that you are here for support. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Mr. Harris, won't you uh, introduce yourself and give me your DOC number for the record? My name is Warren Harris. My DOC number is nine eleven nineteen. Okay, uh, Mr. Harris, I'm gonna read some information for the record. Uh, please stop and correct me if you think anything is wrong. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. First off. Uh, You've said your name and your DOC number. Uh, you are serving a life sentence on three murders. You were sentenced in 1977 to life sentence. Uh, and at the time, I think you were 16 years old. Yes, sir, I was. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, your case today has been signed to Ms. Ledoux. Please answer any records that she may have. Good morning, Mr. Any Harris. questions? Good morning, ma'am. Um, Mr. Harris, I don't know that I've seen anyone as diligent to try to get their GED as you have been. How many times have you taken the GED class, the testing? Ma'am, uh, it has been maybe three or four times. Yeah. And you worked hard to get that. You just received that last year? Yes, ma'am. Um, so, Mr. Harris, uh, you were um, a juvenile lifer, and, and uh, were you resentenced, or were you just um, given parole? Did you have to go back to court to be resentenced? I was resentenced, yes, ma'am. And in what year was that? Uh, I believe in 22, ma'am. I'm not certain. You may have to uh, speak with my attorney concerning that. I would like to. Yes. Um, ma'am, would you confirm what date he was resentenced? 2021. I believe it was in. That's okay. Just the year's fine. Okay. 2021. Okay. Um, the reason I, I'm asking that question is because um, although you've had 128 write ups, Yes, ma'am. The last one occurred in, in 17. Yes, ma'am. It was four years before you knew you had an opportunity maybe to get out. Is that correct? No. Yes, ma'am. So what, 
What happened? What flipped the switch in 17 finally? Why did you stop having problems in prison in 2017? I stopped, I stopped being around negative individuals, ma'am, and allowed myself to only affiliate with positive individuals who were doing positive things. Uh, I engaged in my fellowship regularly. That took up most of my time. Well, I note that you um, did get involved in um, faith-based activities around that time. Yes, ma'am, I am. You, you started engaging in uh, a lot of the opportunities uh, in that particular subculture of the prison, the faith community. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I come from a Christian background. My family has always been uh, spiritual believers, and I continue. Well, are you restarting? Because yeah. looks like you weren't in the right track for many years there. I was not. No, I was not, ma'am. Um, I read the background of of the case itself. <laughs> Pretty heinous crime. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I take full responsibility, ma'am. Okay. I really do. And I regret that that had ever happened. So you have taken victim awareness? Yes, ma'am, I have. I want to hear in your own words, Mr. Harris, why should we consider letting you out? Um, I have rehabilitated myself. Uh, God has allowed me to reevaluate my life and set out on a positive course. That positive course has led me to obtain several uh, certificates in healthcare provider. Uh, I'm skilled at landscaping as various other uh, trades, janitorial, uh, and uh, at present I am an academic GED literacy tutor, and I feel that I will be able to contribute to society in which the community I will live if given the opportunity. Were you personally aware of any of your victims or were these chance happenings? You know, no, ma I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with any. No, oh, ma'am. I was not. Um, in the record, it indicates that you haven't had family um, visits, but I do see that you have um, your sister and um, a niece. So you've been yes. having pretty often at the Ma'am, uh, only when only when uh, only when they are able to. Uh my baby sister, whenever she can, she's here. My niece, whenever she's whenever she's available and has the time, she will come also. Um, what is what is your greatest um, challenge looking at possible parole? What is do you have any concerns or what is your greatest concern if you get out? Ma'am, I have a few nephews. I have one that I constantly pray for, and I wish to reach him before anything happened to him. Or before he winds up in prison, not just him, maybe a few of his friends. You know, I would like to reach him. Yeah. Um, I may, I, I'm gonna reserve the right to to come back and ask more questions later. But at this time, um, Mr. Freeman, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Mr. Prater, you have any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Harris. Yes, sir. 
you pled or you were found guilty of killing three yes, in the, were those at different times tell me about the time in between each it was different times how long was it between each one i'm trying to understand the crime i don't care about the gory details according to the records it was from february 13 i believe until april 6 i believe okay so a length of time what and there was a fourth a fourth murder did you commit that one too i was found not guilty i was found not guilty sir okay did these all take place at the same place the same area within the same area sir okay and I'm trying to distinguish and, and find out it, it's it, it sounds almost like a serial killer. OK, uh, yeah. I mean, that's with my background. That's what it sounds like. So what was the M.O. of this serial killer? I understand. Uh, I was a young juvenile teenager, with no sense of direction, a high school dropout. Swallowing all kind of pills and anything you could think of at that time, you know? And I just, wow. sorry it happened. And I just wasn't in the right state of mind, sir. Yes, I mean, did you did you set this up, set these murders up in order to rob the people? No, was sir, it was not, it was not a setup. It was not a setup at all. Then why would you, why didn't you? I was in need of money to support that drug, the drugs I was using at the time. Uh, I became uh, affiliated with, uh, Some of the victims, you know, and was asked to accompany accompany them to their home. And at the time, uh, when we entered the home, uh, I robbed and killed those men, and I'm, I'm, I'm I regret it. And I'm so sorry every day. I regret it. That's all that I have. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Okay, Mr. Well, Harris, I just have one question. Um, yes. what, what have you done to address your drug problem since you've been in Angola? I have, I have taken uh, drug courses, living in balance, uh, step one and two. Uh, I up when I, you get out? Sir? Do you plan on following up when you, if you yes, were? Sir. To... Yes, sir. I will certainly follow up. And I, I'm sure Mr. Myers will, will have some stuff to say about that uh, when he speaks. Okay. okay uh, I have no further questions. Uh, so now we will go to the family. Uh, first, Roberta Harris, sister-in-law. That's me. Okay, you want to speak first? Oh, I, on, on behalf of Warren, I just wanted to... You can go up there to the uh, podium, ma'am. On behalf of Warren, I am his sister-in-law. I met Warren uh, through his brother, David, America David. Uh, met Warren in 76 when his brother and I met. When I met Warren, he was... Um, this, this kind and gentle person, he stayed right next door to the grandmother, Miss Julia. And Warren was always taking care. He looked out for her, he made sure she had everything. He made sure his mother had everything. He made sure his siblings had everything. But like he, he admitted, with the drugs that he got um, a hold up to, it just did something to his mind to just make him do things out of the ordinary. 
but he was raised in a Christian family. His grandfather was a minister. His mother sang in the choir. They were required to go to church on Sunday. Um, but like you said, once he got out into the, into the streets and uh, those drugs got a hold of his mind and his brain dropped out, and then uh, we just don't know what happened from there. But we still love him. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Kerry Myers. Uh, good morning, Kerry Myers with the Louisiana Parole Project. Uh, this board already knows Mr. Harris was 16 years old, uh, addicted, uh, had been addicted for, for some time uh, before he committed these crimes. Uh, we also know that, that 16 year olds and, and addiction can lead to some, some horrible consequences. Uh, we know why the brain science says that the juveniles uh, are different. Uh, but Mr. Harris, uh, I think Ms. LaDuce said it correctly, seven years ago, the light completely clicked on uh, before he knew he was going to be parole eligible. Um, and he rededicated his life uh, spiritually. He worked very hard on his GED, um, his programs. Um, Mr. Harris is now not a 16-year-old addicted child. Uh, he is a 64-year-old man who has served 46 years uh, for these crimes. He has a uh, support system. One of the things that will happen immediately, uh, address any concerns that, uh, that you may have about that. Uh, uh, Mr. Freeman is he, he will get an evaluation of uh, substance abuse and mental health evaluation from our social work staff. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that any recommendations are followed through that. Not only that, uh, after 46 years at, you know, from a 16 year old now to a 64 year old man, uh, he's going to need um, the type of services that we can provide that the, the in essence, uh, detoxification from, from the institutionalization that he's been involved in for the last 46 years. Uh, and that's what our program is, is absolutely geared to do. Um, he, will, he will learn technology. He will, in, in, in steps, uh, he will learn social norms, uh, which are certainly different uh, from when he entered prison. Um, he will have the act, uh, uh, ability to continue to access our social work department. Uh, he will learn financial management. Uh, he, is he is still healthy. He is still employable. Uh, he has employment waiting uh, for him. His sister uh, has offered him um, housing um, and has been supportive throughout this time. Uh, we're here to help him through that for as long as it, it needs to be. Um, and once he's completed our program, uh, Mr. Harris has a, has a strong support system. So we would just um, ask this board to, to, to consider the fact that, you know, he is not the 16 year old uh, addicted child uh, that committed these crimes. Regardless, uh, it, it's, it's, you can't minimize uh, any of the actions. Um, they were horrific, but uh, this is the whole capacity to grow and mature. Uh, is the reason we're here today. And so we'd ask this board uh, to consider all these factors today in, in making their decision. Uh, before I go to uh, the subject and the lawyer, uh, Warden Falco, do you have any uh, comments you would like to make? Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, you know, you, you were talking about, about the history of, of Warren's record and uh, yeah, at one time, he did have a class A trustee status. He worked in beautification for us outside the fences for eight years. Um, then 15, lost that on a write-up, had that other write-up in 17. He's worked his way back up to a class A again. Uh, when he did back in 2017, worked his way back up to a uh, men B. His job was a union supply stock clerk for us in the warehouse. Um, he was responsible for a lot of inventory uh, that was worth a lot of money. And those jobs are, are jobs that we will put inmates in that we can trust to the degree of, even with oversight, that they're going to do a good job for us. And he did that um, until 18 when he went into his full time. GED and uh, to he, I think he was six times in his GED attempts and finally there and now he's a tutor. So 
Yeah, he, he definitely in, in 17, as, as you guys stated, has, has done a good job in turning that corner and maintaining his, his process and his projection to where he is now. So his focus has changed. Thank you, Juan. Sure. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harris, would you like to make a statement? Yes, yes sir. Ma'am? Ms. Palmer hasn't spoken yet. Oh, Just I got what he had his speaker. Let's see. No, he hasn't. Uh, Ms. Palmer, would you like to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning. I'm Warren Harris, uh, baby sister. And uh, we all were disobedient to our mother and our grandparents coming up. I was pregnant at 14. I was a grandmother at 40. And throughout the years, <clears throat> uh, we all have turned our lives around and went back to the foundation on which we were brought up on. And that was the foundation of Jesus Christ. Uh, I have seen Warren grow throughout the years. We all were in prison those 47 years with Warren. Like I said, we were all disobedient as children and I got pregnant. Uh, I was smoking weed. I was in an abusive relationship with my children's father. But throughout the years, we stayed connected. I had been going to the prison since I was four years old. My father, our father was in jail since 28. Our mother was abandoned by her first husband and then abused by our father, which was in jail for 28 years. Then Warren, he's been in there for 46 and now my other brother, he's been back and forth for 15 years. So we've all returned back to the foundation on which we were brought up on. Thank God for that. I've seen Warren mature. He's helped me throughout the years. I've sent photos when photos were accepted. I've sent money throughout the years, visits throughout the years when our mother was living, now that she's gone. Now I'm a, a great grandmother uh, at the age of 60. So Warren has been like a father, uncle to my children, my grandchildren. And uh, we lean on each other. When I go and visit, I don't just go to visit him. I go because I need him. He's been a support to me with the JP and the emails. He encourages me. He sends me letters and prayers throughout the. And so I'm here to be here for him till the day God calls us all home. I've seen a change in all of us. Uh how we've changed our lives and living the way our parents and really intended us to live. But uh, I thank you all for this opportunity. And I thank uh, my parents for raising us up in this faith base because in 47 years ago, this opportunity was not possible. But uh, we prayed and asked God to forgive us of our sins and to have mercy upon us, to pity us and spare us. And so this day, he has made this day possible. And I thank you for the hope of it. And I thank you for the, the joy and just the confirmation. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Um, Ms. Uh, Floresca, you ready? Somebody. Yes, ma'am. Perhaps you wanted more to speak first. I was here. Uh, however, y'all want to do it. Usually the inmate speaks first, so it's okay. up to you. We can have Mr. Harris speak first. Okay, Mr. Harris, your attorney yes, uh, wants you to speak. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. This morning, I have I now have the opportunity to address the Saval family, Palmer family, and the Delano family. This matter should have been addressed years ago, 
but because of matters concerning contact, I was not able to do so. To each family member of the victims, I sincerely apologize for taking the lives of your loved ones. I'm truly sorry and regret what had happened 46 years ago. Your family has suffered many years missing someone very special who has been taken away from you. I'm truly sorry. During my years of incarceration, guilty feelings has gripped me deeply. My guilt has motivated me to call out to God, asking for his help, for change within myself. My prayer had been answered. God allowed me to reevaluate my life and set me out on a positive course. I become a servant, giving the very, giving my time and the very little resources I have, helping those who cannot help themselves. I continue praying and asking God to give me the ability and to continue to allow me to be a positive influence to those around me. I'm truly sorry and regret the offense I had committed. I apologize to the community for these crimes were committed. I'm very sorry and very remorseful. I appreciate this opportunity that has been given me Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Uh, now, Ms. Floresca, please. Good morning. My name is Abigail Floresca, and I'm a student attorney at the Law Clinic, representing Mr. Warren Harris. In 1977, Mr. Harris committed devastating, horrible crimes, taking the lives of multiple men and striking fear and pain throughout the community. As you've heard today, Mr. Harris is deeply remorseful and ashamed of his crimes, and he's carried that remorse with him every day for 46 years. In these 46 years, he's channeled that remorse into processing the harm he caused and becoming this mature 63-year-old man he is now today. I know the board is well aware of Miller versus Alabama, how even children who commit heinous crimes still have the capacity to change. Mr. Harris is truly the personification of that ability to change. His life shows that when children are removed from abuse, drugs, violence, and dysfunction, they can become totally different. 16-year-old Warren ran the streets and didn't follow the rules as he heard. 63-year-old Mr. Harris is a trustee and hasn't had a write-up in seven years. 16-year-old Warren did all he could to numb himself with drugs. 63-year-old Mr. Harris finds peace and joy from singing in gospel bands, like the Transformation Gospel Band, the Pure Heart Messengers, and his favorite song to sing is When Beneath My Wings. 16-year-old Warren sat in his grandfather's church, nodding off high on heroin. 63-year-old Mr. Harris has earned 41 certificates for Bible studies and his contributions to ministries, such as the leadership programs. 16-year-old <coughs> Warren took the lives of multiple men. 63-year-old Mr. Harris takes care of the elderly and the sick in hospitals. 16-year-old Warren dropped out of the eighth grade and didn't see a future for himself. 63-year-old Mr. Harris spent two decades trying to get his high set, and when he finally earned his diploma, he immediately turned around and became a literacy tutor, helping others achieve the same thing that he did. Mr. Harris has earned a total of 56, 56 certificates for programming and accomplishments throughout his time in prison, he was dedicated to learning many years before Miller passed, and parole was even a possibility. 
The board has asked about Mr. Harris's plan for recovery from addiction and drugs, given his history. And Mr. Harris has recognized that recovery is a lifelong process, and he will always be an addict, and that's always going to be a part of his life. But he's willing and ready to join Narcotics Anonymous meetings and any anything else that the parole project is also going to support him with. Uh, finding those resources. I've included in the parole packet a list of local Narcotics Anonymous meetings in the area where he is going to be living. Should the board grant parole, Mr. Harris has the support of his family, his friends, and a parole project. As you've heard, the parole project is going to help him with reentry and everything that he's going to be needing, navigating, coming to the free world after 46 years. His sister, Brenda, has supported Mr. Harris his entire time in prison, visiting him, supporting him, and she's ready to give back to him as well. Mr. Harris is also hoping to give back as we heard, mentoring his nine grandnieces and nephews, continuing to sing and worship, and doing landscaping, passion he discovered while at Miller, striving to make the world around him more beautiful. The significance of Miller hearings is that children who have spent the majority of their lives incarcerated have the opportunity to show they've changed and in 46 years, Mr. Harris has done just that. Today, he's a trustee, a man of faith, a literacy tutor, and a, and a source of support to those around him. Pastor Savoy wrote, he has a heart for people and a life that reaches those who seem to be unreached. In light of the person that Mr. Harris is today, we urge the Honorable Board to grant Mr. Harris his support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we'll uh, vote. Uh, Ms. LaDue, since you have the case, you'll vote first. Mr. Harris, um, You have to understand all of us take this role very, very seriously. And um, I read all 200 pages of your of your um, file several times. And I have I have gone back and forth on this. Um, hearing you today was was very insightful. Um, you have a low risk assessment on the tools that we are provided with. Um, you have good plans for your release. You have what I consider adequate institutional educational accomplishments. I can't change what you have done. Um, in taking the lives of those people. Many times I ask myself before I make a vote, would I live next door to this person? Would I be afraid to live next door to this person? Mr. Harris, there's still some things in your record that concern me, some of the write-ups that you've had, um, especially the 21s. Okay, I'll be honest. Okay. 21. 21. <clears throat> Um, but at, at this point, after 47 years in, of incarceration, um, I believe that you're ready for the streets. And so my vote today is to grant parole with the condition that the parole project tune in very carefully to your needs, um, for your, um, giving you the tools to make good decisions. Okay. So, um. My vote is to Graham. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Prater? So I've, I've heard some very strong arguments and recommendations today, and I applaud you, Mr. Harris, for your growth and and the accomplishments that you you've uh, that you have accomplished. Uh, I think you're truly repentant of what you've done. 
Uh, I think we all have our mission fields in life. I'm a strong believer in that. I, I truly believe that your mission field is there at Angola, at Louisiana State Penitentiary. And it's similar to, I guess in my mind, it's similar to a person that might smoke and then develop cancer and then quit smoking. They still have the cancer. They still have to pay the price for what they did. And so having said all of that, I, I, and, and considering the fact that you were given three life sentences to run consecutively, my vote is to deny. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh... You know, I looked at this, uh, Mr. Harris, in a lot of ways. You were 16 years old when, when this occurred. You were on drugs real bad. Uh, yes, you sir. know, that does not make any excuses for what you did. It was, a, like your lawyer said, it was a very horrific con, crime. But uh, I do feel that you've done all you can do in Angola. That. Thank uh, you. That, that your work was is done there, but you have plenty of work left. Uh, so my vote today is to also going to be to grant to the parole project. Okay, Mr. Myers, I want him very thoroughly drug treat, treatment. I want I want him to look at that closely. Um, and uh, if he needs inpatient treatment, you get back with us. Okay. Um, Gonna do that. Also, I want you to uh, have drug screens two times per month for the first six months. Uh, you fail any of those drug screens, I can promise you, you will be returned. And uh, and that's all the conditions I'm gonna put on you. I'm gonna let your officer put the rest. Uh, I thank your family for showing up here today and your representatives have meant a lot. Uh, like your sister said, y'all need to all grow together. Thank you, sir. Uh, world's gonna be watching you. I can promise you. So, be careful. Uh, that's my okay. vote. Congratulations. I just have to say, Mr. Harris, it's yeah. very difficult to make these kind of choices. Okay, and then I appreciate Please. what you done. I understand. Thank you, ma'am.
we don't have This is Jordan. Yeah, that's mine. Michael, love. Blue water. Blue water, too. I'm thinking about the way it's so. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we will be uh, reopening at Angola. Um, this hearing will be on Michael Lloyd Jones. Um, is anyone here to speak on behalf of Mr. Jones? Please identify yourself. Is there anyone uh, with you, Mr. Freeman? Nobody's with me, uh, Warren Powell, who please okay. have when you all this, all of them introduce themselves. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell I'm me if you speak or not. I'm as far as Michael Dixon. And then you're speaking, right? Okay. Yeah. Michelle Jones, his sister. Are you yeah. speaking? Yes, sir. Okay. Daniel Ambrose, his cousin and also employer. And you're going to be speaking too, correct, Mr. Ambo? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, is Mr. Lonnie Jones there? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Jones will know the yeah. in support and Michael Jones. I don't know if he's there or not, but uh, yeah. he is. Yeah. Yes, he's sir. a son and he's also there in support. Um, when you when you come up to speak, name your relationship to the offender, okay? Um, I don't see anyone in opposition here this morning. Uh, so let me put some information in the record and we'll get started. Okay, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, yes, sir. you were sentenced to life in prison for habitual offender simple burglary and habitual offender for a firearm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, I, I should have stated, my name is Pete Freeman. I'll be the chair today. And with me is Mr. Prater um, and Ms. LaDuke. We also have Ms. Singleton here in observation uh, to, to learn today so she can teach us some stuff. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, Mr. Prater. Yes, sir. Mr. Jones, how are you today? Great, Hello. sir. How I wanted to ask you, the, you're in, in jail right now for simple burglary of an inhabited dwelling, and that occurred in 2009. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and you were originally charged with aggravated burglary, correct? And you pled to simple burglary, correct? Yes, sir. Well, I got found uh, guilty of a lesser verdict at trial. Okay, you were found guilty. But you were also found guilty of felon in possession of a firearm, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, the firearm that you were found guilty of, did it come from the burglary? Yes, sir. So come. in fact, in fact, even though they found you guilty of simple burglary of inhabited dwelling, it was an aggravated burglary. Uh, in my view, if you got a gun from there, correct? I mean, it's just it's just one of the elements of the crime. But the jury chose to not put that on you, correct? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, and then you were multiple bill, and that's where you got the life sentence on the multiple bill, uh, yes, because of the fact that of your previous. And I've got a list of your previous charges: uh, possession with intent, crack cocaine, or six counts, and then another time possession with intent of cocaine. Uh, that's a different than the six count on crack. 
uh, possession of cocaine, which is different, disturbing the peace. And you've been out, you were allowed to one time out on probation and that was revoked. And two times you were on parole and both of those were revoked. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All that led up to the multiple bill. Have I got all those facts correct? Yes, sir. Okay, your last uh, your last infraction that I could find was in 22, 2022, and that was for aggravated disobedience, and you were written up for that in in jail. What what caused that? Well, sir, I was actually I was, and I take responsibility for the incident, but I was living in the back of the dormitory, and uh, the officers. They rotate the doors going outside. When you go in the yard, they rotate the doors. So uh, the officer was going to shut the door, and I was running from the back of the dorm to go work out. I pushed the door to try to, to stop her to get to get out the dormitory, and she hit the beeper say that I pushed the door and tried to knock her down, which I did use force on the door. I, I, and I take full responsibility that I did. And I mean, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for it. I I, I used uh, a little too much force trying to get out of the door. So okay. that's how. All right. And that kind of kind of like the burglary where you kicked the door in. Right? I mean, we have a problem with these doors, don't we? <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, how do I? I mean, you're wanting to get out of jail, and you got 12 years on the burglary, but in fact, that was a simple burglary, and because of the simple burglary, it wasn't a violent crime considered a violent crime. Although you did take a gun, which made it ag burglary, which is a violent crime, but that's not what the jury found you guilty of. 15 years on felon with the possession of the firearm that you got from the burglary, and I, and then the multiple bill. Tell me. And then you get out and three different times you're given a chance and you violate your probation and twice you violate your parole. Tell me, tell me how come, convince me I can trust Michael Jones. Well, uh, I was young, I was very immature. Uh, I was misled in, in my thinking pattern concerning life growing up. So, I mean, I matured a lot since then, you know, and I understand slowing down and just really thinking about what you're thinking about, period. Just, you know, I mean, I have, like I said, I have matured a lot. And I know there's no excuse for my past and the things that I've done, but I mean, I know risk factors now. I understand the risk factors and, and, just slowing down, just slowing down your thinking process, period, and not allowing my actions. So my thought, my thought process, I know now that the things that I think about, not allowing my feelings to make me feel like I got to act on things and cause negative consequences, cause unwanted consequences in life, period, because I understand when you victimizing somebody and traumatizing people and society as a whole. So I don't, I mean, I'm not that person anymore. And like I said, I was misled growing up in the society that I grew up in and thinking that, you know, following the trends and the things that go on, you know, in, on, in society. And I have learned though, I have learned a lot throughout this incarceration and I have wisened up a lot because the the class, the self help, the self help classes that I did took, I actually took them serious. So, and I learned from thinking for a change. At first, I had anger management as my top priority, trying to really control my anger. But once I got once I got into victim awareness, I mean not victim awareness, thinking for a change, uh, and I kind of learned a little bit about victim awareness too, but. When thinking for a change, I learned the risk factors in your thought process. Let me let me stop you just a minute, Mr. Jo Michael, Mr. Jones. Uh, and all that's interesting. And I listened to it very carefully. And 
and you're getting into your statement later that you'll be able to give. And so we'll hear that. I just was asking for a short, just a short, why should I trust you deal? So why don't you say what you're saying now in the essence of time, and you'll be able to say it in, in conclusion, you'll have a chance to give a, a longer statement, okay? All right. But I I grew up, I grew out of that, sir. I really grew out of the immature stage that I was in. And I know better. I take life more seriously now. You know, me being an older, older man, I know, you know. I mean, I I really want to change. I really want to change for the better for my family, for my son. You know, I really want to be able to spend time with my family again. So, so the things that I learned, I took it and took it serious as far as changing my life and really trying to do better in life. Period. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. That's all I have. You have any questions, Mr. Lindy? I was interested uh in finding out you've been back and forth to the hospital a couple of times recently yes, um can you um tell me about that situation well i was I, uh excuse me for laughing but I, I i had got into working out a lot and i used to be trying to work heavy when i couldn't handle heavy iron uh the heavy weights and i was well, the waist chained down on the on the iron pot, the waist chained down to the bench. So when you grab the dumbbells, you're not free with them. And I was trying to show off with one of the dudes, one of the guys that I was working out with, with the 80 pound dumbbells. And the chain snatched on the bench and it slipped and hit me. One of them slipped. One of the dumbbells slipped and hit me across uh my chin and it, it broke my jaw and caused two i had to get two plates in my uh in my jaw so yes, that sir. was one of them but the first one okay hmm. okay so what was the first one was related to working out too or no ma'am that was actually a uh an altercation that i had got in it was a that one was an actual altercation with a, another offender that I had got in. Um, was weapons used in that altercation? No, sir. I was just in the cell. We was in a cell. We was I was in a cell at the time on uh, administrative segregation. And we got into it in the cells, and I was calling. The, I had my back against towards the the uh, the urinal right there in the cell. So uh, he just really got the best of me, and he he broke my jaw. Okay, I don't have any further questions. I have one question. Um, what what were the uh, contrabands for? Uh, cell phones, sir. All of them were cell phones, none of them were drugs. No, sir. They were cell phones. Have you bust, ever busted out on a drug test while you've been there? On a dirty yarn? No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. I have no further questions. So. Okay. Uh, now we're going to uh, let the people speak that are here on your behalf. Uh, first one will be Miss Michelle Jones, sister. Yeah. Hi, my name is Michelle Jones. I'm Michael Jones' sister. Um, I'm right on. Um, well, me and Michael is 364 days apart. So I basically grew up under him very, very close. We're still close to this day. Uh, we did grow up in a hard life and we had to figure things out on our own. And it wasn't easy. Me as a woman, um, I never been to jail, thank God, but it was very hard um, raising. Uh, we had to raise ourselves. I'm sorry. We basically raised ourselves, figured uh, life out on our own. And um, throughout the years, Michael being here the 15 years, I've been very close, close to him, calling him. Oh, well, he called me, me, me writing him, sending him um, money on his books and things like that and talking with him. I can see a whole difference within him. And, you know, I myself told him uh, things on 
how I overcame, uh, um, you know, anger issues because we were angry because, you know, we didn't have parents at the time really in our life when we needed them and we had to figure it all out on our own, surviving um, financially, physically, mentally, everything. So, you know, I, throughout the years, I told him how I, I overcame a lot of things that I overcame you know, and and I've seen a big difference in talking to him. He and he helped me out with with things I was dealing with at you know certain times throughout the years, and I do see a bigger change in him. And it, and it is possible, you know, that he can get out here and do better for himself. I did better for myself. I'm a owner of a women clothing store in Slidell, Louisiana. Um, I've been there seven years. Um, one son, thirty one years old, a five year old grandbaby. Maybe, you know, so I know that it is possibility that throughout your past, you can come back and even better. And I know and, and see it within him that he he has that change in him. You know, our family, despite what we went through, I, my whole family, I see and know have good hearts. And we don't we're we're not the type of people to go out to try to hurt anybody. But sometimes, you know, anger do get the best of you. And when you're young, you don't know no better. But when you get older, you can see the consequences. And in throughout those years, I seen within him, he hurt. He he hurt it a lot of years not being there. We just lost two siblings, two brothers. He's my last brother I have. I lost a um, 24 year old brother uh, uh, the year before last, and a 50 year old brother from from COVID in 2020. So this is my last brother. My family is real, real small. Um, you know, and, and, and I see the difference in him and I know he want to be out here to his only son, you know, to get to know him. He, he lost a whole lot of years in his life, but I know, and I see that, you know, with, 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 with whatever he's been doing with the classes and things like that, and with God help, and I know he's deeper into religion that he's going to get out here and be a better person. And I'm quite sure, you know, with my help, I'm going to be by his side as I has been these 15 years to make sure that he do that because we're older now. I'll be 47, he'll be about 46. We we always been close in age and close, you know, knitted. So I'm willing and, and gonna make sure that he get where, you know, wherever housing, job, whatever he need done, clothing, financially, I'm gonna be here for him. And as I always has been these last 15 years. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh Danny Ambrose, cousin. Should I stand up? Oh, you stay right there. Don't you speak loud? Hey, I'm Daniel Ambrose. I'm Michael Jones' cousin. And uh, actually, me and his sister Michelle are the same age. And just to reiterate what she said, we 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 grew up a little different. I mean, well, I had my mom and dad, and who was also a part of, I mean, their life much as they can be. And just growing up, we didn't have a lot of options. We didn't have the things that we have and we understand now. Right now, I am the business agent of Local 39, Ayatsi, the Stagehands Union. And with Michael, we talk a lot. And I also know that it's things that I can help with in society. I'm, I'm eligible to get them certified for over 12 different heavy operating equipment machines. I do all the hiring at the New Orleans Convention Center for the stagehands and also Teamsters Union. So with employee, with employment, I mean, he have options. His sister's an entrepreneur. I'm also an entrepreneur. I own a, a dealership. And I really didn't know he was doing a body work. I didn't know he got certified, but he told me about it. And we talked about it a while ago when I opened up my dealership because I have sometimes cars that come right. So I, I, I mean, even with that, I'm proud to see that. And I know Michael's changed a lot. I know he has. And like you said, the, the opportunities wasn't there. So we went off to Bible instincts. And as we grew and we understood and we, we were born into other families that had a little more education and had a little more things that was gone from, then we understood and we saw better. But Michael didn't have a chance to get those things. So we we started bringing it to him. And when he was learning in prison, he's he actually educated me on a lot of things that helped me 
in society. And he wasn't even there and he helped me. So he's a big reason why I am who I am today with Local 39 being a business agent. So I just want to thank you all the council and I want to thank Michael in front of everybody because I never thanked him for me being where I'm at. Yeah, he, he really did a lot. So but thank y'all council. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh Mr. Dixon. Yes, sir. I'm Michael Dixon, his father. I just want to say when um when Michael was coming up, me and him used to go cut grass together. You know, Michael used to go to Glen Dixon and bring people groceries to the cars and bring the money home to his mother. He was a good, good guy. And I want to try, I work offshore, I'm a cook offshore. And I want to try, if he don't get a job with his cousin, I was going to bring him off, offshore to cook offshore with me. And um, I just hope he get home so he can know all this could happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, real quickly, I, I saw in some of the comments that there were some victims that commented. Is anyone on the on this telecast that would like to speak? Any any uh, victims or opposition? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, also, would uh, like to. Uh, for the record, and there's nothing you can do about this, Michael, but this is the recommendations from the uh, DA and people of that nature. Let's see. Uh, the judge didn't comment. District attorney didn't comment. Uh, the sheriff didn't comment. The chief uh, superintendent is opposed. And the victim, one of the victims in this matter, is also opposed. I think that's all we were able to contact. Okay, uh, so uh, now it's time to uh, wrap it up, uh, Michael. Uh, wait, Warden, do you have any comments? Warden Falgu? The only thing, I, and I'm not sure if you guys have this, uh, he did complete thinking for a change in January of 24. I don't know if that made the record for you guys or not. Um, other than that, no, I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Terrence. Okay, uh, Mr. Jones, would you like to uh, make a statement on your behalf? Just apologizing to the victim, uh, Ms. Keandra. I mean, I understand now, like I was saying, I was saying previously, I understand the trauma that you cause when you victimize somebody. And, you know, when the, that crime was committed, I was immature and didn't know any, well, I can't say didn't know any better because I was of age, but I was misled in the wrong thinking pattern. And I mean, like I say, said previously, I just want to send my deepest. Even, I, I never know the the amount of trauma, how, how deep that the trauma was with her and her family. And I don't know. I, I can never imagine how much it is. But I do. Even if the wounds are still fresh in her heart, uh, with her, I just want to let her know that my sorrows are multiplied because I was the one that that caused her that great pain. So. I just want to apologize for my heart for real. And hopefully, you know, she can forgive me for for my actions in in that in that situation. And that's all I got, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh is the board prepared to vote? Yes. Okay. Uh Mr. Prater, you vote first. I think because, uh, uh, Michael, because of the number of crimes that you've committed in the past throughout your life and the fact that you did commit this terrible crime of really a home invasion almost, or it was a home invasion, you broke in, kicked the door in, did all of these things. And then the big, a big thing to me is the 
two times on parole that you busted out and one time on probation you busted out and so that coupled with in 2022 uh less than two years ago or around two years ago the deal with rushing through the door uh you're trying to get through something you didn't come hell or how water you going through that door and that that that's indicative there of somebody that that doesn't have a good control of themselves in this situation so all those things combined i'm voting to deny at this particular time not to uh not to cut you <laughs> off from trying again but i want some more time between your last disobedience your last uh right up i want some more time in there to show that you really have changed so i'm voting to deny Uh, Mr. Jones, <clears throat> Mr. Jones, um, I have found that the programming thinking for change is one of the most valuable tools that we offer to our inmates, um, allowing them to um, really start to put some tools in their toolbox. Um, I want to encourage you to write back for uh, another chance, but my vote today is to deny. I really do believe you're on the right track. I, I think you need a little bit more time to mature and to understand the consequences of some of your choices. Um, so today my vote is to deny. Okay. All right, Mr. Jones, uh, you've already received two votes to deny, so you know the outcome today. My vote would also be been to deny at this time. I do feel like you're headed in the right direction. I think you should reapply as soon as possible and stay right up free before you come back, okay? So yes, uh, that's my vote today. I, I think you're gonna have a shot at it, so don't, don't let this deter you, okay? Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, everyone. Uh, today's date is April 17th. Uh, we'll call this hearing back to order. Uh, once again, serving with me, I'm Chair Pete Freeman. This is Mr. Prater and Ms. Ledoux will be serving with me today. Uh, would you please introduce yourself for the record? My name is uh, Joe Galliano. My DOC number is 471711. Okay, Mr. Galliano. Um, okay, today what we're going to do is we're going to have your parole hearing. Even though your date is not till December, we can have them uh, further out if we have uh, opportunities. So you're, you're, even if you would be granted today, you would not get out to December. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So today, uh, speaking in opposition, we will have Mr. Randy Myers of the DA's office in East Jefferson. Uh, we have Mr. Robert Lancaster and law student Louis Bersalt. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Mr. Bersalt, will you be doing the talking? Yes, Mr. Freeman. So Robert Lancaster here with the LSU Law Clinic. Uh, with me is Lou Borso. She's an international exchange student from France uh, who assisted uh, Mr. Galliano in preparation of the hearing and work to prepare the packet submitted to you. If uh, the committee deems it appropriate, she's prepared to make a statement of support uh, at the end of the hearing. Okay. Uh, we have Mr. Kerry Myers of the Louisiana Parole Project. Here, but not speaking, we have Tammy Ortego, sister, Esther O'Brien, godmother, Alex Galliano, nephew, Daryl Lane, stepfather. We have Adrian Hutchison, another attorney. Uh, Roy Galliano, brother, he will be speaking. Uh, Orgelia Galliano, sister in law. Diane Galliano, mother. Daryl Bordelon, friend. Pam Wilson, sister. Ashley Lane, wife, and she will also be speaking. And Mr. Glenn Wilson Jr., who is a nephew. Have I missed anyone on either side? Did I miss anyone and didn't announce their name and relationship? Okay, I did. Okay, we're at Louisiana State Penitentiary. This case has been assigned to, oh, well, let me read your dates into the to record. I'm sorry. Okay, you were sentenced to a 40 year sentence. Um, your parole date is 12 1 24. You have a good time date of 12 1 38, and you have a full term date of 12 2 44. Does that all sound correct to you, Mr. Galliano? Sir. Okay, your, your case has been assigned to Mr. Prater. Mr. Prater, would you begin the question, please, sir? Okay, Mr. Galliano. Let me ask you something. How long have you been actually? How many years have you served sentence? How much how much time have you been behind bars? Oh, almost 20 years. Uh, almost 20. No, okay. 20 years December. All right. I wanted to ask you a little bit about, about the incident, but let's start before that with the baby that had the broken leg. Tell me about tell me how that happened because that that could be the difference between a serial or uh, just an incident. Yes, sir. Uh, on that date of the broken leg, um, my dad and I was on the way to a camper repair place, and Christopher was was in the back seat behind my dad. Um, he, uh, we got to the camper place, and my dad got out. And I got out and four of the camper guys came out and I was taking Christopher out of his booster seat and when and talking to the camper guys at the same time. And when I picked him up, I pulled him out and it, it, laid, it sounded like a popping sound. 
So I told my dad, I said, I need to take him to the hospital. See, he wasn't crying or anything like that, but I wanted to take him just to make sure everything was okay. And you took the baby to the hospital, and then what happened? What did the hospital say? They, they said it was a broken, or, or it wasn't a fractured leg. It wasn't broken, it was fractured. Same thing. But what part of the leg was fractured? Uh, the lower leg. Okay. And the baby didn't cry? No, he didn't cry. And my dad was, even said he didn't see, you know, everybody was standing around when it happened. And they didn't think any to even take him to the hospital. I said, no, let's take him to the hospital and have him checked out, you know, just to be sure. Okay. Well, let's fast forward six months or five months to the incident to put you where you are. Tell me about that day. On the date and time of that incident, I was in the backyard with Christopher, and he was playing with one of our new puppies we just got. And I was cleaning up around the yard. and. I noticed Christopher had urinated on himself, so I called Christopher's name to get his attention, and um, he wasn't paying me no attention. He was paying attention to the dog, so I walked over to Christopher, and I knelt down in front of him and placed my hands under his arms to explain to him, you know, the importance of letting me know when he's got to go to the bathroom, because we were potty training him at the time, and... Uh, he still wasn't paying me attention. So that's when I had shook Christopher to try to get his attention away from the dog. And um, he still wasn't giving me no attention. So I took him inside, changed his clothes. And I, I noticed that he started going into what appeared to be a seizure, which was something I never seen Christopher do before. So I ran next door to my dad's house so I, he could call 911 while I, I did CPR on him until the EMT got there. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I have. Ms. Um, have you seen Christopher since um, you were sent to jail? No, ma'am. The last time I seen Christopher was at the hospital that night. That was the last time I seen Christopher. Are you aware of his condition today? No, ma'am. You don't know the condition he's in now? No, ma'am. I have no no uh, input on. Okay. Um, have you taken um, victim awareness classes? Yes, ma'am. That was one of my main classes I took that uh, got the most out of. It gave me the ability to realize how many people was infected by my actions that day. It also gave me um, an understanding and was able to hear from other victims on how someone's actions affected their lives, but mostly it gave me a chance to write an accountability letter to Christopher and apologize for my actions. And you were 32, you were about 32 years old when this uh, crime occurred? No, ma'am. No, oh. ma'am, I was 21. 21. Were, when this, sorry about that, bad calculation on my part. 21. Okay. Thank you. I have no other questions, uh, Mr. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple questions. Uh, were you ever at the state police barracks? Yes. Yes, sir. Five years at state police barracks. Okay. Why were you removed from the state police barracks? A cell phone. Okay. You got called with contraband. Okay. And uh, I see you went to the hospital a good bit. Um, could you could you tell me why it's been, been recently? Well, you have any medical issues that we should know about? Oh, uh, I had cellulitis in my leg. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I work a lot. I work seven days a week, so uh, my leg started swelling up, and I thought it was just a rash. So I just kind of let it go for a little while, and when I finally did go see, it got to a point where they had to take me to the hospital. I spent seven days in the hospital behind it. Did you take the victim impact class? Yes. What did you learn from that? Just on how my actions have affected so many people. And, and I just, I can't even put into words how um, sorry I am. Or, and uh, just, 
it's just a lot yeah okay all right um i have no further questions so we're going to move on and uh first to speak on your behalf will be uh roy galliano brother me yes sir it's me oh. Mr. Graviano, please uh, identify yourself. And, uh, I'm Graviano Jr. I'm, no, I'm his older brother. Okay. And what would you like us to know about? Well, I'm obviously here to support him, uh, but also he, I have a job for him, a full time employment, a place to stay. Uh, he's going to have transportation, a company vehicle, and a truck. I own an AC business, been in business about 26 years. Okay, and we, are, we also he's gonna you know he'll be where we can uh, help help him get back into to society and become a tax paying citizen and a uh, you know working and working his way back into uh, to the real world. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll have Ashley Lane, his wife. Hi, uh, that's me. Um, <laughs> I am Ashley. I'm Joe's wife. I know that we are limited on time, so I'm going to try and say it fast and wrap it up for you guys. Uh, <laughs> Joe and I have been together for the past eight years. Next month will be five years. Joe and I have been married, and I must say over the years, I have seen his growth. Um, you know, he has uh, become very humble, very loving and kind, patient and understanding. Um, Joe has poured into my life spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Not only has he poured into my life, but also the lives of my children. Um, I have a 20-year-old son who graduated at the age of 18, and he was a little conflicted on what it was that he wanted to do after graduation. So he had a conversation with Joe, and he helped him you know, uh, choose which route he wanted to go. So he chose HVAC. He... Um, went through his schooling and throughout his schooling, he reached out to Joe to ask a million questions and keep him updated on what was happening during school, even throughout his EPA study. So he eventually, he passed his EPA. Joe was the first person he wanted to let him know. Uh, graduation was kind of bittersweet. He uh, walked across the stage and received his certification and he wished Joe was there to be a part of that. So now he is 20 years old. He owns his own business. He is EPA certified, registered in the state of Louisiana and insured. And he gives a huge thanks to Joe for being there throughout his journey. He couldn't be here with us today, but he is uh, joining us via Zoom. Um, so he had a, a, a real huge impact on him, as well as my 22-year-old son who was uh, headed down a a rough path, making poor decisions, hanging out with the wrong kids. And uh, Joe said, let me talk to him. And I did. And uh, Joe didn't talk at him. He didn't point out the things that he did wrong. He simply prayed for him, encouraged him, motivated him, and advised him, you know, to choose better friends. And it worked. So he's now back in college. He's working. And I believe in my heart that it was because of that conversation. And he continues to just check in with them, make sure they're okay, make sure they're staying on the right path. And so my prayer today is that you guys would find it in your hearts to grant him parole so that he could continue to pour not only into my children's lives, but also into the lives of people in the community, on his job, at church. And he does have a phenomenal support system um, in myself, my children, the rest of his family and friends. We all love him. We support him. And we are here to make sure that he gets reacclimated in society and be able to know how to navigate the changes that, you know, that occurred since him being incarcerated. So thank you guys for letting me speak this morning. Thank you for speaking. Okay, now we'll go to uh, Mr. Kerry Myers of the Parole Project. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, Kerry Myers with Louisiana Par Parole Project. Uh, we're here to support Mr. Galliano uh, should this board grant him today. Uh, Mr. Galliano will certainly benefit from, from the resources our program has to offer, uh, particularly our, our residential uh, reentry program. Uh, beyond that, we'll continue to provide uh, case management 
uh, for Mr. Galliano should um, he need any, any support uh, down the road. Um, we were impressed by Mr. Galliano's record. Um, he's got over 400 days of CPR, uh, CTRP credits. Uh, he's a trustee. He works AC, uh, HVAC. He's got employment waiting for him. He's got a very supportive family. Uh, we would just ask this board to consider all these things. Parole Project stands ready to assist Mr. Galliano uh, in his transition. And we know uh, that he has uh, put himself in the best possible position uh, for success in Parole Project. Uh, we'll help him down that road. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we're going to hear from uh, Mr. Galliano. What do you have to say for yourself? What would you like us to know? Let me ask you one more question. I was looking at your disciplinary report. What was the contraband for in 2022? 22 was they found pills in my computer at work, which was in a working open work area uh, mm -hmm. it was deferred to a lie detector test and i took a lie detector test and passed it so it's supposed to be taken out of my record so so mr freeman uh we actually have um uh, a statement from uh brandy perry at hunt that mm -hmm. uh, i can ask reginald to fax over uh but back in january of 2024 uh mr perry uh reviewed the record um um and saw the conduct report report was deferred uh and that that report is no longer in his record um i can have this faxed over to you if you like okay i, I trust you okay uh and and last question mr gallon what was the other contraband for in 2020 20 was a dirty uh urine um uh, i filed an appeal on that as well and as you can see from my record my trustee status was not taken and none of my privileges was taken away. It was supposedly supposed to be taken out of my record. Okay. From what I was told. I just wanted to know what the contrabands were. Okay. Um uh, uh Mr. Brossalt, would uh you like to speak now? Yeah, first. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, the offender. And Mr. Mr. Do you have word about good? Mr. Freeman. Yes. I had you uh, next. This, this okay. All right. I'm I'm getting okay. questions across the room. No, no, no. That's fine. We'll... No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good. I probably should have went with you before I spoke. Yeah. What do you have to say, Warden? Okay. Uh, so I I am limited on on what I can tell you about Joe because he AU'd into us in and eight of uh, 2022. Um, he came to us as a class A trustee, came to us uh, for, for, for continuing of him doing his, his HVAC work. Uh, so he has worked as a class A trustee here since April of 22. And, uh, you know, he, he's got, since his here, he's also taken his victim awareness. He's done his accountability letter. Uh, he's got thinking for a change. So in the short time that he's been here, He's been class A trustee. He's done a good job for us as far as maintenance, but he's continued in his program. I'm good. Appreciate it, Warden. All okay. right. Now, uh, Ms. Borsalt. Mr. Freeman. I'd like to say something, Mr. Lancaster. Uh, Mr. Galliano uh, has a statement that he'd like to, to make for the committee. Okay. All right. First, I would like to thank the board for hearing uh, my case today. I would also like to apologize again to Christopher and his family for all the, the pain and suffering I've caused them. Um, as you can see from my, my record from day one coming into prison, I've taken and done everything that the DOC system offers to better myself. Um, I've also taken a step further and became a mentor and mentored uh, other guys at work, at church, in classroom training. Uh, a lot of my mentees got, got paroled out and in, in the HVAC business. Um, I just want to let y'all know that and reassure y'all, if I am granting my uh, parole today, that I 
will not be coming back to prison. This is a one time thing for me. Thank you, sir. Okay, now let's see if we get this straight now. Now you get to speak. Good morning, dear member of the committee. So I'm Lou Bourseau, an international student from France here at LSU. I first wanted to thank you to allow me to speak on behalf of Mr. Galliano. So even though I'm not certificate under Louisiana Rule 20, I have been assisting Mr. Galliano through the preparation of this hearing, and I also submitted a brief uh, on behalf of his application. So first, I want to highlight Mr. Galliano's work because he shows consistency by keeping the same job for 20 years. He is actually valued and respect for his job. He has become a mentor to teach other inmates he, uh, his experience and his skill in this job. Actually, some of those inmates are, are at, out now of prison and are doing really well and work in HVAC company due to Joe positive influence of them. So also Joe during his time in prison, it took a lot of programming to try to better himself and work on the thing that led him to be into prison. He took victim awareness, anger management. He is now more able to deal with the, with his emotion. He is seeing before acting, and he has become a more calm person. And he is focused on his goal. He also, Mr. Galliano, has a low tiger score, highlighting the fact that he has a low risk of recidivism if he is granted the privilege of parole. He only got five write-up in 20 years in prison and always make sure to comply with the rule of the prison. So he is actually a trustee for 15 years and gained the trust of the Rodden. Um, and uh, also, finally, Mr. Galliano have planned a really realistic tree-on-tree plan. First, he is going to have the support of the Louisiana Apparel Project that will ensure his transition into the outside world. And after, he's going to have a place at his brother that's going to be near his job, where he will continue to do the same job as the one he's doing right now in prison and for which is really valued. So for all those reasons and the reason that we stayed during this hearing, we humbly ask that the committee will grant Mr. Galliano parole with an any condition that you think is appropriate. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And before I go to our last speaker, Mr. Myers, I would just like to read into the record that uh, Judge Cox, who took Judge Wicker's place, uh, who was the original sentencing judge, is opposed. Uh, no comment from a district attorney. Uh, the sheriff is opposed, Joseph Pinto. Uh, the chief didn't comment. The family, Miss Wilson, your sister is unopposed. Uh, Miss Diane Galliano, your mother is unopposed. And the victim, James Cook, the grandfather of Christopher Cook, who has raised him, is very much opposed. Okay, so at this time, I will let Mr. Myers speak. Good morning, Randall Myers, assistant DA Jefferson Parish. We're strongly opposed to Mr. Galliano's request, as is Mr. Cook. I spoke to Mr. Cook uh, last week. Um, he didn't have the ability to uh, to be able to log into this hearing today. He didn't understand how to do that. Uh, so that's why he is not here with us today. Um, you know, I, first I'd like to say, I, I don't know that there's anything that a two-year-old could do that would deserve to be abused, much less to have to suffer the serious abuse that occurred in this particular case. Uh, and not only was it this, uh, this particular incident, but when you look back at the, the prior incident with the broken leg, um, you know, I've, I've got a, a six or four and two year old grandchildren and to end up with a fractured leg, taking them out of the car seat has to be significantly more than what Mr. Galliano explained to the board today as to how that incident happened. Um, also, his description of how the incident that resulted in these charges happened is not believable. Um, Mr. Galliano said he put his arms under the child's 
his hands under the child's arms and, and shook him briefly because of him urinating on himself. But when the child was brought to the hospital, he was diagnosed with shaken baby syndrome, 22 bruises on his body. He's got a brain injury. He's partially paralyzed on the right side. Uh, he wears a brace to help him use his right arm and his right leg. And he needs special glasses to be able to see. Um, this child has a, a uh, 21 year old child now has a ser serious, you know, injury that's directly the result of abuse that was inflicted on him when he was two years old. It, it's truly unbelievable. And I think 19 years out of a 40 year sentence or almost 20 years is insufficient time um, to serve for the uh, crime that was committed. And so when we now, if we go and look at some of the things that Mr. Galliano's done while incarcerated, um, you know, he started getting some disciplinary reports. He said in 2020, he failed a drug test or dirty urine, as he called it, that he appealed. But that that is still in the record. Um, I don't see where that has uh, has been removed from his record, nor was the contraband removed. But um, uh, I, I, I think that one is more sounds like it, it potentially could have been removed. The um, I think the programming that he has taken that relate to this offense is very limited. And I'm not exactly sure what additional programs they have to assist him there, but he's only uh, only taken an anger management and a nurturing parent course. Uh, other than that, there's nothing that he has taken that deals with um, abusing children and how to prevent abusing children in the future. Uh, so for those reasons and, and the extremely strong victim opposition, we are opposed to his request. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think that about wraps it up. Or is the board ready to vote? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Prater, you'll be first. Vote. Okay. Uh, Mr. Galliano, because of the seriousness of the crime, because there were two incidents, uh, we're not talking about just one, we're talking about two incidents. And the fact that there was additional bruising that we didn't really talk about a whole lot. Uh, and the fact that you've served just less than half of your time, uh, I'm gonna vote to deny it to, to the time. I appreciate all the work that you're doing. I appreciate the reputation you've gotten at the uh, correctional facilities that you've been in. Uh, but at this point, like I say, I'm gonna vote to deny. <clears throat> In addition to uh, Mr. Prater's concerns noted, I would also uh, point out severe victim opposition, law enforcement opposition, and I too grant, to deny, I mean, I, I too beg to deny. Okay. Um, and looking at this case, you know, I, I, I'm more nervous about the write ups than anything right now. Uh, both of them dealt with drugs. Um, you know, I think maybe you might need to revisit some more drug treatment and then reapply, but my vote is also to deny. Thank, Thank you. you.
Okay. Let's see if I can do this one perfect without any errors. Okay, good morning. We're back at uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary. Uh, today is April the 17th. Uh, the Honorary Parole Board consists of myself, Pete Freeman Chair, uh, Mr. Prater to my left, and Ms. Jerry to my right, Ms. Ledoux to my right. Um, Today, we're going to have a hearing on Adam Smith. Your case has been assigned to me, Mr. Smith. Uh, do you have anyone that will be speaking on your behalf? My sister and my brother were supposed to come, but uh, I guess they might be in bad ruins on a Zoom or something. Okay. Is anyone on Zoom? Okay. Nobody's on Zoom. All right. All right. Um, and we also have Mr. Randy Myers who will be speaking. And that's all I have listed. Is anybody else on that wishes to speak? Okay, Mr. Smith, would you state your name and DOC number for me, please, sir? Adam Smith, 70741. Okay. All right. And, um, I've been assigned a uh, case today, so I'm going to be asking the questions, okay? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You are a first-class offender. You were sentenced to... You were sentenced to life in prison for the charge of first-degree rape. Uh, back in 1970, you were sentenced. Is that information correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Here are my questions. Okay, Mr. Smith. Uh, what was going on in your life at that time? I mean, what what would make you do such a thing? I was a little young, wild juvenile. I didn't actually commit the crime. Jefferson Paris had several records stating that the victims has testified that uh and give the statement that my older and bigger Smith accomplice was on the charge with me had actually did that. And they had made a statement to the coroner in the district attorney in Jefferson Parish at that time that the bigger boy, Donald Smith, had raped them, not me. It was three of us together, sir. I was a wild young juvenile just out the juvenile home. And so what did you I do? Off all kind of stuff. Just there or what? Sir? Did you witness the rape? Were you there? Yes, sir, I was there. Okay, and, and then how did this occur? I mean, how did y'all come in contact with these two girls? They were kidnapped from my own robbery. They robbed a, a place. I was there during the participation of the robbery. Okay, so you did They decided to take these people off the telephone. Okay. Um, you know, but, you know, being there when a crime is committed is also like committing the crime itself. Did you do yes, anything? Sir, I know that's a conspiracy the before or after the fact or something, the way they say it. Right. Did you, try, did you try to stop the crime? Did you call no, any law? No, okay. sir. All right. And you're 70 years old, correct? Yes, sir. And how, how long have you been in prison on this charge? At the time. 54 years. Okay, I guess I'll be 54. I've been on the street 54 years, January 28th. Okay, and how old were you when you this crime 15 occurred? years old, 15. 15 years old. And so how long have you been in Angola? Times I went to uh, Satellite in 76. I went to Phelps, or the, we called De Quincey at that time. I had right. done six, almost seven years when I went to for there, then I went to uh, court order a couple of times, one time about nine months, in around 1979. All, all, all the rest of the time I was here, sir. Okay. Uh, you told me you had just got out of the juvenile. Is that correct? 
That's uh, in New Orleans called the Mill Du Bois home at that time. Okay. And how long did you stay in that? Four months. Okay. And why were you there? Just being bad, not going to school, trying to say all this kind of stuff. So my aunt that was raising me at that time had me put in uh, the juvenile things for not going to school. Okay. Uh, I see you have a residence plan in Texas. Who are you going to live with down there and where are you going to work? I was going to do that when I get down there. If I got it approved, I had people, relatives down there in Texas were going to try to get me a, a job situation. But they had told me that uh, this didn't get approved. Unless somebody was misinformed and gave me the information back. They told me I couldn't go to Texas. I okay, Martin, y'all get something back on contact with regard to uh, compact with regard to Texas? Yes, uh, sir. I turn in there. Okay, yes. no, let the warden speak. Hang on one second, Mr. Freeman. We're looking it up right quick. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't I didn't see anything, and I'm looking right here, and I don't have anything. Okay. Yeah. You know, so the best don't see it. right now. Looking at his record, looking in the computer, and we we do not. Okay, thank you, sir. It should be in the computer, right? If it was filed, ladies. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Smith. I don't know where things got turned around, but you you, you compact the text that says we showing that it's never been submitted. Uh, where would you right. stay and live around here if you got out? Any one of the uh, halfway houses for the facility. Uh, I'll go to uh, Alexandria, uh, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, any facility uh, they have over. San Francisville. Okay. Several Just miles. real, real hard. Doesn't matter. Get, uh, sex offender. Uh, one of them. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, did you have to take the sex offender classes? I saw you took one and two. Did you yes, take sir. them all? I took all of them. Okay, good, good. I just want all to make sure. Oh. All four phases of it, sir. Okay, and you took anger management. You take any other classes while you were there? I took the whole 100-hour program in okay. 2012. I see you took victim awareness. You took anything else, anger management? Yes, anger. sir. Took two phases of that. Got all my certificates right here. Yeah, okay. Now, this, this is what really concerns me. You have 110 write-ups. Now, you've been there a long time, so, you know, 54 years, 110 write-ups. But the bad part about it is if you got uh, two in 2022, about a year and a half ago, you got one for a 19 self-mutilation. What were you doing? How were you hurting yourself? Uh, I was trying to go to the hospital uh, at the time, and the sick call man uh, seen, didn't want to let me go or something there. And I feel it though if I cut my own myself with the razor, I could get over there to, to the emergency room and see somebody. Yeah. I know I went out the wrong way, but right. that's what about uh, August 17th? Uh, in 22, you got arrested for a three and a five, defiance and an aggravated disobedience. What was that about? Trying to see what that was about. 22? 22, August 19 of uh, 22. All right, all right. Guess what it was? I was over oh. there in A block, and they said it was coming around to paint or do something with the lights. My pressure got up high out there on the Yo, he's out in the hot sun, and I asked to uh, see uh, the America, the emergency uh, team people, and they didn't do it. So they told me I had to stay out there in the hot sun. I told them I couldn't stay out there. I was having dizzy. My pressure was going up. I have a serious problem with high blood pressure. My heart and stuff be acting up when I get in severe heat like that. I wasn't used to being out on that yard. No, I don't even come outside on the yard. So they wouldn't call nobody for me at that time. And they wind okay. up uh, put me in a 
brought me up, put me in the uh, ministry to serve them. I had to go to court for that. All right. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I have no further questions. Any of y'all have to ask any questions? Um, let me ask you about the incident you say you didn't, you weren't involved in, but you have two females and you have three males. And one of the females says, that while somebody was raping somebody inside the car, a man and a woman, the two outside the car, one of them held her legs apart while the other raped her, and then they switched places. Now that's all three people doing a rape according to the two females. All three males doing rape according to the female. That didn't happen my way, huh? No, sir. I could, uh, you probably got to get the archives of Jefferson, Jefferson Paris back there. Got, got them, had the, had the original statements. And a lawyer named Lionel Collins went to be a judge later on, was trying to get me off on that. The other boy went to the juvenile home. This older girl was named Cynthia Kaiser, according to their records down there in Jefferson Paris. See, she was the only one that was raped by the older, bigger boy. The other girl name was Lorraine Fager, and they had her down as a virgin. Nobody was never raped this girl, and she had her statements in there also. They was trying to get us cut loose on, and it could be proven if somebody get down there to Jefferson Pratt. That other girl was a virgin. Name was Lorraine Fagan. I never forget her name. She was 15. The one named Cynthia Kaiser says she, the bigger boy, was by record name with Donald Smith. Say that was the some, I don't know about nobody holding anybody down. You didn't know anything about that, huh? Oh, sir. For so, some, so for just know that was never, huh? were you there? Were you there? I was there, but not on this, uh, where well, you got that stuff that you're reading now, I was there when this active crime took place. You were present when the crime took place? Yes, sir, but not with that, not that part of that. I had the first time I'm hearing something like that. Somebody and was held down. You're saying the girls were raped. They, you're saying it's one of the women was raped? Yeah, one of the girls were raped. The older girl was named Cynthia Kaiser. That's down but, at Jefferson Parish. That's in the records. Supposed to be in the archives. But the, the other thing was hers were that this uh, older, bigger boy raped her. The other two little ones didn't do anything. They see the victim statement. They had her back all in the courthouse and everything. That the bigger boy was bullying the, the two little ones and had them doing what they want them to uh, to stand by and do different things, giving them the orders. That's the kind of statements they had on them. And so, listen to what I'm saying. Listen, yes, you're saying only one girl was raped. Is that what you're saying? That's what they had on their records originally, sir. Care what they got in the record? You tell me. How many girls were raped? It was two girls. One was 15, one was 16. How so many girls were raped? According to her statement, the one girl name was you, Cynthia. See, she was raped. Me. Listen to me. You're not answering my question. You were there. You witnessed it. How many girls were raped? Boys, I know one, Chief. I mean, uh, sir. One girl. Far as you know, one. Well, you were there. I was outside the car while the bigger boy, the oldest one, was in the car with this other girl. This one was sitting out here on the ground, and nobody touched her. Nobody. Her name was Lorraine Fager. Did you ever get in the car with Lorraine? D the lead. When all us left. 
I got back in the car. Okay, I I, I don't have any other questions because they turned into arguments because they didn't they didn't what the reports show. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Do you have any questions? There's no questions. Okay, so now we will go to uh there's a okay, that's the only person here is Mr. Uh, Mr. Rain. Okay, uh Mr. Uh well let me put in the record the uh the comments for the record. Uh the Judge was Judge Sarkaria. She's no longer presiding, but the presiding judge is opposed. Um, that is the, the new judge, Frank Zachariah. Okay. And he, he took Chris Cox's place. Excuse me, that's just the opposite. Judge Zachariah was Cox, the Cox took judge. his place. Judge Cox is the current Cox. Judge. Okay, uh, no comment from the district attorney, but Mr. Myers is here. Opposed is Sheriff uh, the Pinto. Uh, no one's here to speak on your behalf. And uh, we'll get to your statement afterwards. Okay, Mr. Myers, what do you have to say? Yes, sir. Thank you. Randy Myers, assistant DA Jefferson Parish. So there was a petition for habeas corpus that was filed in this case, and opinions went to the Louisiana Supreme Court. Um, and just scanning through that opinion, based on what Mr. Smith was saying, that um, he didn't commit this offense. One statement in this opinion talks about Mr. Uh, Smith admitted he had confessed to the crime. Um, the district attorney allowed uh, the defense counsel to see the entire file. And they concluded that the state had a very strong case against Mr. Smith, which resulted in his guilty plea to the two counts of um, aggravated rape. Um, I spoke with one of the victims um, last week, and uh, Ms. Kaiser, Cynthia Kaiser, Ms. Fagan is deceased. Um, she remains very traumatized. She stated to the victim coordinator that I feel like the state should just do what they think is best. Uh, in my speaking with her, I uh, um, spoke with her at length and her husband at length about the case, and they agreed with my position that we are strongly opposed to his request for, for parole. Um, now, if we look at, at the facts as I see him in the reports, um, a little bit different than what Mr. Smith is contending. Um, the, the record shows that uh, he got out the car with another man, raped uh, the, the now deceased victim outside the vehicle, um, uh, while the other uh, defendant assisted by holding her legs open, and then they swapped. Uh, then Mr. Smith went in the vehicle and, and rape the lady in the uh in the back seat um the uh she identified him, uh and and identified mr smith as uh as the the culprit um now how did this offense occur mr smith and two other guys um stole a rifle somewhere then they stole a car then they took the stolen car and a couple of guns and they saw these two young girls on a telephone walked up with the guns, uh, abducted them, took them in the car from Arlene's Parish to Jefferson Parish where they were raped, uh, and then fortunately subsequently let go. Um, so what has he been uh, doing since he's been incarcerated? Well, he's had 110 disciplinary reports, 15 reports since 2016, six reports in 2021 and 2022. So clearly he, he is not... Uh, um, learning how to how to uh, deal with the prison system. Typically, after so many years incarcerated, uh, their write ups seem to you know you may get a lot of them in the early years, but you don't get a whole lot in the later years. He continues to get plenty of disciplinary reports. Very concerning to me is 2021. He had a sex offense. 20, I'm sorry, 1981. He also had a sex offense. So he's had two sex offenses while he's been incarcerated. Progress report notes that he is a fair 
prison record um, and his programming has been limited. The, the program that he has taken essentially is a uh, hundred hours. Um, he took a cage of rage, anger management. He did have the sex offender treatment, which is good. And he obtained his GED. Uh, very few programs dealing with, uh, you know, rehabilitation and getting, um, I guess some with rehabilitation, but uh, to help him when he, uh, if he would ever get out to have uh, an opportunity to earn a living. Um, you know, this was a violent crime committed by three guys against two young girls. Uh, my opinion is he needs to remain in prison for the entirety of his sentence. We're opposed, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Okay, last but not least, uh, Warren Falgu, do you have anything to say? No, sir, Mr. Freeman, I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, is the panel ready to vote? Yes, sir. Okay, um, since it was my case, I'm going to vote first. Uh, Mr. Smith, I'm not going to lie to you when I read it and all, and I saw how long you had been in and you're taking your, your sex offender classes. I came here today to vote for you to get out. But then I learned you don't have a residence plan that's approved. It's hard to get an approved sex offender plan. Uh, plus, you, you, you just take no responsibility. Uh, you know, being there is enough. I mean, you took these girls with two rifles. Uh, you took something from them that could never be given back to them, uh, as they were both very young ladies at the time. Uh, and I think you need a psych evaluation. You're cutting yourself and you're doing things of that nature. So, Warren, if you could try to get him that psych evaluation, but my vote today is to be to, to deny with all the reasons stated. Mr. Uh, I vote to deny. Uh, same reasons. Uh, continued discipline problems, failure to admit your involvement and your attitude. I concur with my colleagues. My vote is to Okay, Mr. Smith. Uh, that is the vote today. The vote is to deny. We will be closing out at Louisiana State Police at 1138. Thank you, Warden. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.